Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm home and I'm cozy. I'm drinking some chocolate milk. There's a snowstorm going on outside. It's like a full on blizzard. Oh, actually it's chilled out quite a bit. Oh, it's past four. It's probably chilled out. It's snowed overnight like crazy. My car is completely drowned in snow. Um, everything shut down, there's nobody outside. It's a shit show. There's like 30 to 50 centimeters of snow in the last 24 hours. It's actually wild. So yeah, welcome to fucking Toronto. Today, I will be talking about self-awareness. It's something that's very important to me and the journey of self-love and involvement and growth that I've been on. Self-awareness has been the key to everything. If you're on a journey of self-discovery, you can't do that without making your first priority to become self-aware. I would say you can't love yourself until you know yourself. It's like when you're trying to, you know, talk to somebody, you're feeling them, you got a crush on them, you're starting to fall in love. You can't fall in love with that person unless you get to know them, unless you're like, you know, like 13. It's like infatuation. But in order to truly fall in love with someone, you need to get to know them first. So our relationship with ourselves is no different. We need to know ourselves and understand ourselves in order to have that deep sense of self-love. What is self-awareness? I mean, I'm sure we all have an idea or we know, but I'm gonna read a dictionary definition and I get into my own version of the definition. And the dictionary is saying, self-awareness is the conscious knowledge of one's own character, feelings, motives, and desires. So yes, it is. Um, my version of it is self-awareness is when you know who the fuck you are. <laughs> you know who you are, you know what you like, you know what you dislike, you know what you're good at, you know what you're bad at, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you know your flaws. You know yourself and who you are to your core. Self-awareness is very, very important. So I wanted to talk about, I guess, a quick little intro on my journey to self-awareness just so you guys kind of have a feel of how it went for me. I'll try to be quick with that though. Usually I take like nine minutes. I'm gonna try and take like two minutes on that. And then I'm gonna get into my tips on how to become self-aware. Okay, so. Um, my self-awareness journey started, oh my god, like, when I was 23. It was 2019, and I went through my first breakup, was my karmic partner. So there were lots of big shifts in my life that happened because of this connection. And if you don't know what karmic partners are, just wait, I'm gonna make a good-ass video on that. So because it was a karmic, I learned a lot through this connection. So after the first 2019 split, I was so depressed and lost and confused and I didn't know who I was and I needed to learn about who I was and why this all happened. So I started journaling again. I got a journal and I journal daily. And um, during this time, I was writing about anything and everything, about what I was feeling, what I was going through, what we fought about, and like everything, right? And the biggest thing that helped me was reading this journal back every week or so to see what was going on in my brain and to see how things were changing. So, for example, if I wrote about a fight in September and it's now January and we're broken up, I can look back on the September fight and, you know, with a fresh set of eyes and see what I did wrong. And then I could see some of my flaws and I could see different things. Or for example, if we got in a fight and this person was telling me about myself, you know, I now know none of those things were true. But back then, I believed it to be true. So I would look in and ask myself questions on like, where did he get this from? You know, why did he say this about me? Like, is there truth to it? And then I dig deeper. So that really helped me. I also started reading books, um, books like The Alchemist, uh, The Four Agreements, The Fifth Agreement, The Secret. Um, so many books. I have a whole video on spiritual books that changed my life. All of those books were the ones that I read around this time. I started to learn a lot through those books and it helped me get to know myself better because I would read something, let's say, for example, The Four Agreements. And uh, The Four Agreements are like, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions, always do your best, and uh, damn, I always forget the fourth one. The ones that really resonated with me are don't take anything personally and don't make assumptions because I never realized at the time that I take everything personally and that I always make assumptions and that's like the freaking root of my unhappiness at that time. Because of those books, I was able to learn about myself, dig deeper and find out more. And here's the beauty of learning about yourself. It's addictive. You want to learn more because you're like, whoa, I take things personally, I'm sensitive? Since when? And then you want to figure it out and you want to figure out where it started. And it's like a really cool journey. So that's my journey. It kind of continued on from 2019 to 2020 and just like it got 
deeper and deeper and deeper. I went through like a really tough relationship as you guys know um, and during that time I lacked self-awareness because I was so blindly trusting someone that told me things about myself so I kind of lost a sense of self through that but then after the breakup I came back to myself and I was able to kind of pick back up where I started in like 2019 to 2020 and just like completely rediscover myself and it was so cool it was like getting to know a new friend you know it was really interesting and fun and I feel like a lot of the work that I did on myself in 2019 like I said I picked up where I left off I don't know it made my journey easier now in 2022 and 2021 um, but yeah so that's my journey it's been beautiful it's been hard it's been wild it's been chaotic it's been quite a few things I want to talk about the good and bad sides of being self-aware and then get into some major tips on how you can achieve self-awareness. Okay, let's start with the bad. The bad is, it's pretty fucking depressing. Ignorance is bliss, let me tell you. Ignorance is bliss. I wish that I was just going about my life hurting people and not knowing it like I was in 2015. Okay, no, I don't actually wish that, but I do wish for the level of peace that 2015 Ashley had. I was, you know, so many things to so many people and I didn't even know it. I didn't realize the impact I had left on people's lives in good and bad ways. I didn't realize how bad of a friend I could be because I was living in my own bubble of just not knowing who I was. I didn't know my flaws. I didn't know my strengths and weaknesses. I didn't know anything about myself. I just knew that I liked to do certain things and I you know, enjoyed alcohol and I like to spend money on foolish things and I sucked at studying. That's all I knew back then. I didn't know who I was. I didn't even know if I was shy or outgoing. I literally did not know who I was. And I didn't care to know. I didn't realize that knowing myself was important because I hadn't really evolved spiritually. It's like I did all the spiritual things, you know, I bought crystals and I lit incense and I like meditated but like I wasn't doing any inner work I was just doing like the surface level shit that goes viral on Twitter and TikTok like you know what I mean so I wasn't actually digging deep into who I was I wasn't doing shadow work I wasn't doing inner child healing like I didn't know anything so now that I do this shit is dark oh my god because once you start your self-awareness journey just know you're gonna be a little depressed or a lotle depressed. I know a lotle isn't the word. Um, it's really, it's really heavy shit. Because if you have not like dig deep into yourself, and you begin to do that, you're going to discover parts of yourself that you do not like, and you're gonna have to learn how to accept them. And that acceptance is hard when it's something that you haven't really realized before. You're gonna have to learn how to forgive yourself because you're gonna start to discover like. The toxic shit you've done in your life and you're just gonna have to sit with that and be like damn like I did that I do this I'm not a nice person I'm selfish I'm inconsiderate I'm these things like what and you're like huh and you just get so confused because you're like whoa I didn't know it was all these things like why didn't anybody tell me you want to just like blame other people and then you start to like reflect on um, how you've hurt people and all these things and it, it really sucks because you don't change overnight so you realize it but then the next day you catch yourself doing some like bad shit to someone and you hate yourself for doing it because you're like I know better why aren't you doing better and it just like becomes this like self-loathing journey in a way it's really really sad to be honest um, I don't wish that part of it on anybody but it comes with the journey so just know you're kind of in for it you know <sighs> so yeah that can get pretty depressing um, you also start to uncover other parts of yourself that you realize that you don't like or you're not proud of down to little things like hey like i'm a big procrastinator when you're not self-aware it's very easy to think of yourself as this like great person because you don't realize all the bad shit that you do so like it's like a really weird flip another thing about self-awareness is that it's very lonely um you feel like you know this big secret that nobody else knows because once you're self-aware, you're not only aware of who you are, you're aware of what is going on around you. You can spot a person who is not self-aware from a mile away. 
and these are the most difficult people to be around because you feel like they're living in their own little ignorant bubble of perfection and you see beyond all of that so for example if you have a really close friend that wonders why she goes through all these bad relationships with men why she loses all her friends why this that and the third happens and you see why and you know why you know her character and you're like it's because this this and that they get defensive they say no it's because blah 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 no it's just that blah 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 and then you try to tell them about themselves but they don't have the mental capacity to understand what you're saying because they lack self-awareness so you feel like you're talking to a brick wall and you'll find that majority of society is living in that little bubble of perfection um, in which they could do no wrong. Majority of society is not self-aware. And because of that, you feel this sense of loneliness. And I don't know how to explain it. You literally feel like there's no point in explaining anything to anyone because no one's going to get it because they don't have the skills. You know what I mean? It's it's draining especially when your friends come to you with problems and you want to help them but you know you can't because they won't get it they won't get it because they don't know themselves those are the kind of people that get defensive those are the kind of people that make lots of assumptions those are the kind of people that constantly deflect or woe is me they're always the victim those are the people that you kind of outgrow through this journey this journey will have you losing friends I will tell you that right now because once you have that awareness you're gonna know yourself enough to be like oh I deserve better than this person I deserve better than that person I've outgrown this person and then they're gonna start dropping like flies it's lonely as shit it is but you start attracting more meaningful relationships so yeah maybe you'll lose 19 friends but you'll gain three solid ones three solid ones with people who are on your level, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, people that you can connect with at this phase of life in, and it's just so much more meaningful and it feels so much more fulfilling, so it's worth it. It's just, I'm telling you right now, this journey is not for the weak. If you are not ready for it, I don't know, man. I mean, I think we're all ready. So I, I don't know what I was about to say, but I think, I think we're all ready for it. So I think you should start the journey just understand that it's not an overnight thing you don't need to rush this journey you could literally just start so small and it's you know and you don't have to rush it it's a lifelong thing it's a lifelong process so just trust in that one of the positives i just mentioned is that you attract more meaningful connections in every area of your life you start to attract people who are better for you people who are on a similar journey and it's so abundant it's actually such a beautiful feeling you start to love yourself because you know yourself so yeah you see all the bad shit but you also see all the good you're like hey i'm loyal as hell hey i'm actually really funny i'm really nice i'm a really loving person i'm really good to my friends you start to notice all the really beautiful things about you which leads to a deeper level of self-love the bad shit yeah you uncover that too but you have to work on loving yourself in you know in conjunction to the self-awareness journey so you will find a deeper level of self-love and it's it's so nice because i didn't love myself before but i didn't know myself so i didn't even know that i didn't love myself you know what i mean it was just exhausting so yeah start to love yourself because of the awareness you now have you know what you want you know what you don't want all these things so a lot of things in your life will make sense so for example if before you were unhappy and you didn't know why now because of this awareness you have you might be like oh the reason why I'm unhappy is because I don't feel fulfilled in my job and I actually really hate my job and I would be way happier somewhere else. I know it sounds basic, but how do you not know you hate your job? You'd be surprised. People are like, why am I miserable? And they don't know that they hate their job. Why am I miserable? They don't know that their boyfriend is actually shit. Why am I miserable? Oh, maybe because I don't have any hobbies. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to start to realize different parts of your life that are missing something and you'll be able to fill in those areas therefore more happiness you know what I mean so that's a really beautiful thing as well you also just start to attract better things because now you know yourself like I said you know what you want like pretty much what I just mentioned but now you're attracting more because you're more aligned with your higher self so you're vibrating at a higher frequency which means you're attracting better opportunities that are aligned with you which is lovely the second I realized the reason why I was miserable which was school 
Believe it or not, I didn't know that I hated school. I just thought I was bad at it and my ADHD did not allow me to focus. Like I didn't realize I just, I, I hate school. Once I realized I hate school, like my life changed. I moved out. I got a book deal with a major publishing company, got my book in a bunch of stores. I launched a podcast. I started a new channel. Like I was doing so much, you know, I hit a hundred thousand subscribers. Everything just like fell into my lap once I realized like why I was so unhappy. Things started falling in my lap and it wasn't even that I was, they were falling in my lap. I worked for them. It's just that now I was more aligned with my higher self, bringing forth all the abundance. Now you know about self-awareness and its importance, now I want to give you some final tips on how to achieve self-awareness. Number one, journal your little heart out. <laughs> Journal. I'm gonna create a worksheet of journal prompts that will be out by the time I release this video. So it should be linked down below or as a pinned comment. In this worksheet, I'm going to have self-reflection journal prompts to achieve a deeper level of self-awareness. So if you need inspiration, if you need help with it, I got you. It will be very cheap, so go crazy. <laughs> Anyways, if that's not your budget, then definitely just look up some reflective questions that you can ask yourself. When I journal, I just write what I'm feeling. I write what my day was like. I write how I woke up feeling, you know, because little things that you don't think are important, they are. I noticed that in a certain month, I was waking up sad every single day and I was like, why am I sad? And then after a few months, it all made sense to me and I was able to put the pieces together. Journaling, you don't have to write a page a day. You can literally write one line, three days later, write two lines, four days later, write one line. A week later write 20 lines you know like whatever your heart is feeling just go with it you know don't put pressure on yourself what I suggest though read your entries back read your entries back that is the key to this journaling is great but if you just take one day a month one day every two weeks and just kind of skim through what you wrote and see what's changed since then see if you still feel the same see if you were just like I don't know maybe on your period and over emotional or hey did you really feel that you know, like there are certain things that you'll be able to like connect the dots and understand things about yourself better. So yeah, that's number one, journal your heart out. Number two, ask your friends about who you are as a person. Hey, if, if you could describe me in three words, what would you use? Hey, what's something I do that really pisses you off? Hey bestie, what are some of my less favorable traits? Is there something that, you know, bugs you a lot but you don't tell me? Ask them. Or if you feel like there's something about you that you don't like, for example, for me, I was constantly told, I know it brings up all the time, I was constantly told I was selfish, so I went to my friends and said, hey, am I selfish? Am I selfish? Please tell me if I'm selfish. And I would ask them a million times and they'd tell me, yes, no, you have tendencies, this, that, the third, you know? And that was super helpful for me because I thought I was so many things at one point that I would ask them and they'd be like, no, you're not, no, you're not. And I'd dig deeper and I'd be like, no, I'm not. Ask your friends. At the beginning of my self-awareness journey, there were so many things about myself that I felt confused about. So I would just go to my friends and be like, hey, like, do you think I'm this? And then depending on their answer, I would, you know, dig deeper. Ask your mom, ask your dad. They know you best. Number three, like I said, read. I mean, I have the video on like all the spiritual books. Those are very helpful books, um, but also fiction books can help as well. If you find a book that has a character that you relate to, it might help you learn about yourself. You'd be surprised at things you can pick up from reading. Like, you pick up a lot from reading. Reading is lit. So go find a book. Go to the thrift store, find a book. Number four, therapy. I know it's not in everybody's budget. I know, I know, but therapy has helped me so much. I actually don't pay for therapy. I live in Toronto and if you do enough research, you can get therapy for free. Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram if you have questions about that. You must be from Toronto. I don't know shit about America and Canada. We are blessed and we have free healthcare. And if you do enough research and you do the work, you can get therapy for free. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. I go every Friday, it's lovely and it's changed my life. And I've learned so much about myself. For example, something that I learned through therapy last week actually that just blew my mind. It's that, um, so we were talking about like learning how to do new things. Something I've been learning to do is so. Um, I talk about that sometimes and like how 
I hated school and anyways like things that I mentioned in like session number three and now we're on like session number 30 um, come up like months later because I'll say something and she'll connect it back to something I mentioned and um, anyways the thing that I learned is that I'm actually not a lazy ass procrastinator who doesn't feel like learning how to sew I actually just fear failure um, school and my results in school conditioned me to believe that I am incapable of learning and I don't want to feel the anxiety and stress that I felt when I was at school um, so I avoid learning how to do things like how to run the type of e-commerce site that I want to create or how to sew or how to run Facebook ads these are things that I keep telling myself oh I'll do them one day I'll do them one day and I convince myself that I'm just lazy and procrastinating but I'm actually just fucking terrified of failure and inside I feel like I'm not capable it comes down to insecurity I didn't know that I thought I was just like you know I'm procrastinating and I can be lazy but no therapy helped me discover that part of myself I'm in psychotherapy if anybody's wondering number five find some content creators that you relate to that you see yourself in for example some that I really used to watch during the beginning of my journey Leora Alexandra Aaron Dowdy hindsight I still watch him um, and who else did I watch? I forget. There's somebody else I watched a lot back in the day. I actually don't watch most of them anymore. I only watch Hindsight now. Um, but I felt like I just related to them so much. So I saw myself in them. So when they talked about certain things, I felt heard. I felt seen or I realized things about myself that I didn't even realize, especially Hindsight. Hindsight helped me so much. Shout out to him, I'm pretty sure he's Canadian as well, so yeah, he's dope. Even just watching like fun channels like Kelly Stamps, like I see so much of myself in her. It's so interesting. I literally feel like she's like the American Gemini rich version of me. It's so funny. Like I see her and I'm like, that is me. That is me. Things I don't even realize. Like I remember I was watching her Don't Call Me Oreo video years ago or like, I don't know, like last year or two years ago. And there was so much that like she went through, she talked about that I was like, damn, like that's like exactly how I feel, you know? It helps you feel seen. So. That's helpful as well. And lastly, if you want to take the quick, fast track way to getting to know yourself, go find yourself your karmic soulmate. That'll shake shit up, fuck your life up, create a tower moment, and inevitably cause a greater level of deep healing and awareness onto your life. So, if you're ready for some heartbreak, start doing some meditations to uh, meet your karmic partner. And wait to see what happens it's not fun it is not fun I will tell you right now a karmic relationship is toxic and exhausting and confusing but the lessons you learn holy shit yeah they're crazy um, oh yeah one more thing I suggest tarot videos or readings if you have a tarot deck ask some questions reflect and um, check in with yourself through tarot if you don't have a tarot deck or if you don't believe in that, I, I mean, you could just watch tarot videos like I learned so much about myself by watching, I used to watch Ali's Tarot, she doesn't resonate for me anymore, I don't know why, but Ali's Tarot used to help me learn about myself so much, I would watch like Aquarius, December 2021, you know, I watched Tyler's Tarot, those help. Okay, last one, last one, check in with yourself at least twice a day, morning and night, whenever you want, I like morning and night, how am I feeling this morning, do I feel good? Am I in a good mood? Why? Did I have a bad sleep? Did I have a good sleep? What did I dream about? Hmm. At night time. How was my day today? Am I in a good mood? Did my mood get better through the day? Who did I see today? How did I feel after I saw my friend? Blah, blah, blah. You know, ask yourself questions. Don't just live life. Question it. Question it. You know? That's very fucking important. Whew. Okay. I like this video. I know it's long. But there's a lot of information in here that I think needs to be heard. Honestly, I really do. So, again, I will have the self-awareness guided journal prompts linked below. So if you're interested in that, they will be affordable. So go check them out. I highly suggest using those to journal. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you need more information on self-awareness, then I suggest also like checking out my older video. It's from like 27, no, 2018, I would say. Maybe 2019, I don't know. But um, a couple years ago, it's a good one. It's on my iPhone. It's literally like, just like the most random video ever, but I feel like it was good. So check it out. With that being said, I'm gonna finish my little glass of chocolate milk and 
watch the second episode of Euphoria. I don't know when this video is going to be posted. Maybe the whole season of Euphoria will be done. But right now, episode two, season two just dropped yesterday. So I'm about to do that, make some tacos, and have a good time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.